Hey everyone. In this video, I wanted to dive into blueprints without blueprints, which may seem kind of confusing. Before we get started, as always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated, and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's new content. So the whole point of a blueprint, in Azure, I can create this blueprint resource. And the whole point of a blueprint is I can define different types of object and resource and policy and role-based access controls. For example, I could define, hey, I want to create a certain resource group. Within that resource group, I want to deploy a certain ARM template, which remember can create different types of resources. Maybe also at that resource group, I want to apply a certain role-based access control I give this security principle, user or group or managed identity, this role, which is a set of kind of allowed operations. Maybe at that resource group or maybe at the subscription, I want to assign one or more kind of Azure policies, which are those governance guardrails. And I define all of this, my blueprints have versions. So maybe I start off with kind of a version 0 0.1. And the whole point here is then I have one or more subscriptions. And I essentially stamp that blueprint onto that subscription and all those resources get created. Now when I perform that application, I can specify kind of how it's applied. For example, I could say, hey, it's read only. I cannot change anything that's stamped down from the template. Or maybe do not delete you can modify, but you can't remove them, or I'm doing no kind of locking at all. But if we think about, okay, it's creating resource groups, it's de deploying resources for an ARM template, it's assigned role-based access control, and it's assigning Azure policy definitions or initiatives. And it got me thinking, well, could I just do the same thing purely within a template? Do I actually still need to use blueprints? Now, bear in mind, Blueprints also have features, for example, I can add new versions of the Blueprint, and this relationship between the stamped down configuration and the Blueprint is maintained. So as I do new versions, I can go and update anywhere I actually have that deployed. But my goal here is to be able to create resource groups, assign resources, well, that's easy, that's the whole point of a template. But do role-based access control and policy all from within a template? not using blueprints at all. So let's quickly kind of take a look at a blueprint and then what we can do without a blueprint. So here I have a blueprint defined in my definitions. And as we can see, if I edit the blueprint, I have different types of artifacts. Now you can see, for example, here I could add artifacts at the subscription level. So I can add things like a policy assignment I can add a role assignment, I RBAC. I can create resources with a template, or I can create resource groups. And then within a resource group, well, I can assign policies, roles, or ARM templates. And once you've edited and kind of created that blueprint, you assign the blueprint. So I pick a subscription to kind of stamp that down onto, and then I have this lock assignment. So it's kind of a key point here, don't lock, do not delete or read only. So I, I have those options. And what I've already done is in my environment, if I look at my blueprints, I went ahead and did this. I didn't want to wait for it. So I assigned this blueprint to my lab subscription. So if I go and look at my lab subscription, we can see this was basically empty subscription. And if I look at my resources, well, it went ahead and created the resource group that I defined within there. Sorry, that's not the right thing. It created, there's my VNet. Let's go to my resource groups. It created my resource group that I defined. It set an access control that I defined. I gave network admins contributor rights. So it created the resource group. It created the RBAC. Then inside, it created the virtual network. And then also at the subscription level, it assigned this policy, apply tag, and its default value. So we can see these kind of four things, which again, if we go back to the blueprint, you can see I defined in my blueprint. You're gonna say, hey, 
there was my policy at the subscription level, apply tag. Then I said create a resource group. And then I assigned network admins the contributor role at the resource group and deployed an ARM template that actually created that virtual network. So you saw all of those things assigned. So let's do this now pure template. And what I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use Bicep. So remember, Bicep is that new transpiler. We're trying to move away. JSON is not that friendly for us as humans. I'm going to do it all within a Bicep file. Now, the first thing is, because I want to create resource groups, I can't deploy this to a resource group. So my target scope here is actually going to be subscription. So that's the first part. Hey, I want to do this deployment at a subscription level. And now I want to create a resource group. Now, again, this is easy in Bicep. I have a resource type you can see over here, a resource name just for the Bicep file itself to reference, and I'm creating of type resource groups. And then I just have a name for the actual resource group when it's created, bwb-rg, and a location. So it's going to create a resource group, bwb-rg, in South Central. So that's part one, creating resource groups. Now I want to create a storage account. Now if I target a subscription, I cannot deploy the storage account directly from within this template. So what I have to do is actually call a module. So a module is just another bicep file. And what I'm telling it here is, hey, I want to call this module. Once again, I have kind of the friendly name then I'm going to use actually within my bicep file. But my scope now is the resource group I just created. So it's going to deploy this into my resource group. And it expects only one parameter, the name of the storage account I want to create. Now, if I go and look at this bicep file, here we can see it accepts as the name, the actual name of the storage account, that parameter name. I have a variable standard LRS that's actually going to be the type of storage account. And then once again, I just create a resource. It's name in the bicep is SDG. It's of type Microsoft.Storage storage account. I'm going to use the resource group location that it's deployed to. And then really the only thing here is more well, the name of the actual storage account is that name parameter, which I have up here that I'm passing. And then for the SKU, the SKU name is just storage SKU, which is the variable I define up here. Now I could do this different ways, but I'm just really always doing this as standard LRS. So this will call this module to create the storage account. So now I've created a resource group and a storage account within the resource group. Now I want to apply a role-based access control permission. Now a contributor is kind of a well-known ID. So I'm creating that as a variable. Variable contributor is this. And then I've created another module to assign role-based access control. Once again, my scope, so I'm assigning this RBAC at the resource group that I created earlier on. And then I'm just referencing the variable contributor, which remember is this value up here. And then the only kind of messy part is I want to assign it to a group, JL. Now today in Bicep, I have no way to actually go and look up an Azure AD account. So I actually had to do that in advance. You can see up here in my comments, just so you can do it yourself, I'm doing a get AZ AD group JL, and that will have the ID as a property. Likewise, to find that ID of a role, I can use the get AZ role definition, Format table name and ID. So that's how I got the ID of contributor. So that's the only slightly messy thing today is to get those. I can't look them up by name. So I had to go and get those. I could pass them into this file. But essentially what I'm going to do is say, okay, yep, I'm going to assign JL. So this is the kind of the GUID of that JL group in my Azure AD, the contributor role. And if I look at my assign RBAC, what it takes in the principal ID, it takes in the role definition GUID. And then what I'm actually doing is I'm looking up an existing role definition. So I passed in the GUID, remember, of the role, but I actually need the role definition. 
Remember that the existing keyword, I can look at existing resources that exist. And so here I'm just looking up for role definitions resource type, that particular GUID. So now role def actually corresponds to that particular role, i.e. contributor. Now when I do a role assignment, it has to have a unique GUID. So I'm actually just using this GUID function and then you pass it a couple of things that it's going to use to generate that random GUID. So I'm passing it in my JL principal ID and the role definition ID, so that will help it create a unique GUID for me. So I just need that. And then I just do a role assignment. Once again, I give it a name for the bicep resource over here. Sorry, that's the actual name of the assignment, i.e. the GUID, the bicep name was up there, I'll back sign, and I just pass it that role definition ID, which I got, because remember I have this role def up here, which points to the existing actual definition from the GUID, and then that principal GUID that I passed in. So that's gonna do a role-based access control assignment. And then assigning a policy. Now policy definitions are kind of weird. Um, one of the things, once again, is a policy definition kind of exists at the tenant level, technically, so I can't go and do an existing lookup on the policy definition. So what I'm actually doing here is, once again, I'm doing a kind of deployment via a module. My scope is, again, I'm going to assign the policy to the resource group, and I'm using a function to find the resource ID in the tenant for policy definitions of the actual policy ID, i.e. this policy right here. And the policy name is allowed locations. So if I was to actually go and look at this assigned policy, you can see, hey, it's the policy ID, the policy name. I then create a name for the policy actual assignment. I'm just using the policy name in the resource group. And here I'm kind of hard coding in the list of allowed locations. I need parameters for that policy assignment. Now to actually get that ID that I leverage over here, well, if I go and look at my Azure policy, and I look at all my definitions, and let's look for locations. So we have this allowed locations. We can see here it has this kind of big ID that you can take. So you kind of want that ID. So that's how I can tell which policy I'm actually using. So there we go. So that's now creating all those different types. So I've got policy, a role-based access control, a storage account, and a resource group. Now there is one other thing a blueprint does. When I did that assignment of the blueprint, remember, it gives me that option for the lock. Now, if I update the assignment, I have it set to read only. Now, it does something super clever. It does not use locks. If I actually go and look at my subscription, if I was to go and actually look at something, so let's look at the resource group. Let's, for example, look at my resource locks. There isn't one. But if I actually go and look for that resource group itself, so let's go look at the resource group and look at the locks, so there aren't any. If I look at the access control, it adds a deny assignment. So it's saying deny, block users from performing actions on this. This is very, very special. If I go and look at the actual virtual network, again, there's no lock, but it's using a deny assignment. I cannot do that outside of Blueprints. There is no way today to do that. So how can I kind of try and emulate that behavior? So I am just using a regular resource lock. There's really nothing more I can do. So I'm using a resource lock bicep file, a module, and really I'm just passing it the scope of the resource group. So if I look at my resource lock, well, I'm just creating a lock. I'm using a level, cannot delete. 
and that's it. So that's how I'm going to try and emulate the behavior. So I cannot, that's the one thing about the blueprint in terms of what it applies, I cannot emulate. I cannot do a deny assignment today. So I'm just going to use a resource lock. So all of this should create a resource group, create a storage account in the resource group, assign a role-based access permission of contributor to the Justice League Azure AD, then assign an allowed locations policy to that resource group. I could have applied it to the subscription if I wanted to, and then lock the resource group using a lock. So before we actually execute that, and I've got kind of the command ready over here, so if I actually run this, so it's all in the comments. Again, this file is in the description of the video. So let's go and check it doesn't already exist. I'm not cheating. So if I actually go and look at my resource groups, my first resource group here is cloud. So there is no blueprint without blueprint BWB-RG resource group. So I'm doing a new AZ subscription deployment. I'm not targeting a resource group. I'm targeting the subscription, the name of my deployment, the location, and then my blue without blue bicep file. And I am in the directory where I actually have the file. And I should now go and kick off that actual deployment. And what we'll actually see is once that gets going, we should see kind of this resource group get created and all of that other stuff. So let's scroll this up. Once it actually gets going, it, it's super, super fast. It's going through that deployment stage right now. I wonder if you can actually even see what's happening. There we go. So it's create the resource group. And if I look at the resource group, I can look at deployments. And we can see, okay, so a storage module ran, a policy module ran, a lock ran, an RBAC module ran. And sometimes it takes a little second to catch up. It's showing no resources, but we know it did run and it completed. Again, it's a split out subscription ID over here. It was successful. So I believe we are good to go on this. So let's jump back over. Hopefully now, the pool, there we go. So let's start at the beginning. So we created the resource group, so that worked. We created a storage account. So we can see the storage account there. We can see it's of the right type, LRS, and it has the right name and the right location. So there's location, and there's the name. So looking good. Then we applied a role-based access control. So if I look at access control, and my role assignments, we're looking for Justice League to have contributor at this level, which is what we see here, this resource contributor JL. So that worked. Then we assigned a policy of allowed locations. So if I look at my policies, here we go. Applied policy allowed locations, and it's not started because it's just been assigned. But we can see that worked as well. So we have kind of that RBAC policy actually assigned there. So we're all good. And then we locked it. And there's my lock. So what we have essentially done here, again, not as the deny is different because we can't do an explicit deny, but we have emulated the functionality of a blueprint all as code. So if I think about maybe I'm using DevOps or other types of pipelines and I want to create these different types of resource and RBAC and policy, I can do that 100%. I don't need to use blueprints. I can create those modules, for example, in my bicep file, and I have all of that capability to merge in, so I just have my infrastructure as code and deploy that out. Now, obviously, I showed this as bicep. Um, technically, you could obviously use an ARM template as well. So if we actually jump back over for a second, it is a transpiler. So behind the scenes, it does actually go and create ARM JSON. We just never see it anymore. But at the bottom, I've got the little bicep command. So I could do a bicep build to blue without blue dot bicep. So it will now create me an ARM template. So you can see over here, I've got my blue without blue dot JSON file, which is really doing the same thing. So what we would see over here, if 
if it will come back to life. There we go. Is once again, this is targeting kind of uh, the subscription I would deploy this at. But resources, well, it creates a resource group. Then it does a deployment. So the deployment it does here, oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> the deployment it does here is its resource deployment. And then within it, it's actually creating this value of, gives it a name, the storage account. And if we scroll down, it's doing that nested template. And we can see, well, this is actually the storage account. So it actually goes and creates a storage account. Then, and notice it's got the depends on. So it knows it depends on the resource group it created because it's creating it inside. Then it does another resource deployment. Again, these are all kind of nested templates it's doing in the arm. This time it's doing the role definition ID. So we can see the role definition ID. So it's doing all the same thing. And then it's doing another resource deployment, another nested template. And this time it's actually doing the policy assignment. And then finally, it'll do the lock. All as kind of these nested templates, because it's basically transpiling what was a module into a nested template. So you can do it with ARM JSON as well, but I kind of just prefer, honestly, um, the bicep now. I think it's a lot cleaner. I'm not actually going to save that file. I don't want to save the JSON. But it's there. It's in the comment. If you want to go and look at the ARM kind of version, the ARM JSON, you can. But this was really it. Yes, I've got to understand I delete things. Um, that's the idea of this. So that was a blueprint about blueprint. I hope this was useful. Uh, until next time, take care.